welcome back to Ballam Road Dairy Farming, Pemberton's Farm, for episode number two with me, Mr. Sealy P. I came down to get my van to pick it up and head back. This is just kind of on the end of at the start of the next episode. Um, so I thought what I would do is start organising the equipment for tomorrow's um, contract. And then I thought, actually, while I'm here, you know what I should do? I should check the uh, used vehicles because there might be something on there. Is there ever? Um, I mean, that's pretty cool anyway. The Jung Heinrich forklift. I don't, do I need a forklift at the moment? Probably not. But look! Steyr, 8150. 135 horsepower. Although, what are those hours? Does that say 11,680.1 hours? Two grand. 96% off. Two grand. Or just under three grand for a Steyr tractor. Um, this is what people have been talking about. This hasn't happened, or I haven't noticed it happen. And what I've done regularly, but I don't tend to sell vehicles very often, that if you sell vehicles or get rid of them, they will appear on the used vehicle sale. I wonder how bad that's going to be. 135 horsepower for three grand. I'd be insane not to pick that, wouldn't I? It starts me off straight away. Well, let's put the price up a little bit. Uh, Continental Michelin. Let's go with Michelin. Let's keep the price the same. Do I want any of stuff for... Oh, no, that takes the price up a little bit. Let's, let's keep it at that. We'll take that off. Um, what does that look like on the back? Is it split on the back as well? Yeah, MRSE, ALEP. No, that doesn't work. Uh, let's take that off. I'm, I'm, I'm I, Honestly, I'm amazed. No plate. For three grand. I wonder what it's going to cost me to repair it. We'll take it to the workshop and have a look, can't we? Oh, it doesn't need to repair at the moment. <laughs> We've just picked up a tractor for three grand. Three grand? Okay, well, um... I mean, the hours are insane on it, but it's still running. It's 135 horsepower, and it was three grand. Why would I not? Um, I'll drive this back. Right. See you tomorrow. It's 7.15 in the morning. It's September. It's another glorious day here in Lytham, St. Anne's. Last night, I took the liberty of starting a um, hay contract. So... I did a little bit. Did the mowing, did a little bit of wind rowing to get the stuff out of the way. I started off wind rowing because I wanted to cut off the field, if that makes sense. But because it needs to be tedded into hay, just about to see that. The rest of it I did um, uh, not, not swathing. Widespreading was the word I was looking for. So what I'm going to do then is... Um, Get to this later on. This is this is a sort of side. This is a side hustle. I've got a harvesting contract to do. I've also got popped up. I mean, there's loads of. I mean, tons of baling contracts, as you might imagine. Um, but I have got as well a spraying contract. It, it doesn't pay a lot of money. It's going to cost me more to buy the herbicide, in all honesty. But then I'll have some because weeds are on. Um, and by popular demand, let's head down. Well, I'll talk about this while we go. And this. Um, I was going to say, I don't know if it fits, but it, I don't care. It was three grand. <laughs> it really doesn't matter. Let's get our lights on. Uh, let's get going. And we'll head down. We've got to pick up the... I'm going to bring up the harvester header first, and then we'll look at the bringing the harvester, and I'll go back for the trailer later on. That's not a problem. Um, I'm waiting for a call. I'm waiting for that call from Pemberton. Let's see what they say about the grass. If we get an, a thumbs up and a absolutely calm down, give us a hand, then we'll have a look. 
and we'll see i said in the last episode about maybe feeding the sheep and maybe helping to move the bales i honestly don't know we'll see where that goes so by popular demand seasons is on okay uh, i know some people were quite annoyed and people do get annoyed and people are very passionate now i'll be honest seasons i've said this before seasons on episode 22 is is not the same as the realismus modern seasons it's, it's not even in the same ballpark admittedly it will give us the um it gives us the seasonal growth cycle and the crop calendar and that kind of stuff but really other than that there's not a massive amount of difference between it could have gone either way but people have argued it's more immersive and if i'm going to be running this like you know i suppose really at this time of year as well september what time was september so this would be third cut wouldn't it we would be on to third cut by now for the silage clamps for getting the animals through the winter so we are going to be on a bit of a time crunch um whether pemberton's are going to be getting contracts in like they normally do um that's probably around now is it september october i'm trying to think before it gets too rainy and you know and they'll get their third cut in so potentially we could be on for helping out with third cut maybe we'll see what happens there um, because I think the other thing I know that, that, that Tom has always talked about is trying to get the, the farm as productive as possible. Little changes, whatever you can do. Coles the Cornstar does the same thing. He talks about it a lot. It's, it's about the small changes you can make that can improve productivity, that can improve your animal's health, that you know all the various different things that can make a big difference. Um, I say small things. I mean, here obviously at uh, Pemberton, so, you know, I keep saying Pemberton. I confuse a lot of people in the first episode. It is Pemberton's Farm. Pemberton's Farm Shop and Dairy, or Pemberton's Dairy and Farm Shop, whichever you want to look at it. Um, the map is Ballam Road Dairy Farm. That's the map. I think a lot of people went away to try and find Pemberton's Farm as a map and couldn't find it. The map is Ballam Road Dairy Farming. And the actual farm itself in real life is Burke's Farm. The farm is called Burke's Farm on Ballam Road, but it's run by the Pembertons, so it's Pemberton's farm shop and dairy but the farm itself is Burke's farm so that's why I think I said at the start of the last episode so anyway seasons is on we're gonna see how we go with that you know it, it's gonna control a lot of what we do it's, it's gonna you know which again I suppose makes it more immersive so we've got precision farming weeds are on seasons is on we're going for it um it, it, it was I know I've said this before, a lot of YouTubers shy away from seasons and, and um, it was kind of mentioned and I had a couple of people direct message me and say, you know, well, why does everyone avoid it? I just want to clarify a couple, one thing, well, a couple of things. I've, I have done seasons. I did it on Carmsden. I did it on did I know Carmsden. I definitely did it on Griffin um, because that's what people said they wanted. So it's not that I've never done it. I just don't want to do it all the time, you know, on every Let's Play like I say, I know it makes it more realistic and it gives you that immersive feel, but I don't always want to do it. Let's get the beacons on. Um, and what was the second thing I was going to say? Yeah, it could, I mean, like I say, it could have gone either way. I mean, had I think had seasons been far more intrusive is the wrong word, but you know what I mean? Far more far-reaching, more like the Realismus mod inversion. I think that would have definitely made more of a difference. Um, but. It, Really matter. So yeah, it's on. We're running it. The problem I've got now is I don't know how to get to the field that I'm going to. <laughs> That's going to make life a little bit more interesting, isn't it? Um, I, I really honestly don't know. So yeah, while we're out and getting this done, so my, my plan for today, or at least this episode, is we're going to get out and we're going to try and get some, we'll get this field harvested. Now I think there's weeds in the field, so I don't know what the yield's going to be like. I really don't mind too much if we're left with anything. It's more about I'm going to do the contract and hopefully we'll get paid for the contract. The hay one that I'm doing will be, a, that, like I say, that's a bit of a side hustle. I'll probably do that off camera. I might start on it, so I'm not too sure. But I'm, like I say, I'm hoping we'll get the nod that we can, we can get, go over and have a look um, and see about this sheep situation. So I really want to get on. I want to get onto the Pemberton's land. I want to get on there. Anyway. Um, I'm going to have to stop because I'm. I can't access it from the top of the map. I know that because that's where I live, and I know the field that I'm doing the hay contract in is up there. 
Yeah, so as far as I was saying about um, about Pemberton's trying to get more productive, what we, we're trying to, uh, you know, what we're going to be looking at doing, or I'm going to hopefully help to look at doing, is, um, you know what, I'm going to stop here for a second. I know I'm going to block the road, but I've got the beacons on, as I'm not too sure where I'm going. I'm not going to lie. Um, we're heading out to here. So, yeah, we do need to turn in here, don't we? Go up to... That's a river, isn't it? How do I get to it? Is there a bridge or a crossing somewhere? I don't know. Um, I can't get to up there. Is there a little turn in there? I'm just trying to look at the map and see. I feel that I was just doing hay work and I don't think I'd get to it through, through there. Okay, let's turn in here. I guess we'll just have a look if I can find the way in. <laughs> That's the trouble. When you move to a new area, wow, it gets confusing. Uh, uh, there's, there has to be a way to get to that field, otherwise there wouldn't be a contract in it. Surely, I'll take the beacons off now. We're off the main road. I suppose I should really still have one in case anything comes the other way. Right, so we've got we've got a fence there with a gate. I guess the other way to do this and it would be to use the um, build mode map as kind of like a drone. I know Tom uses his drone all the time, just fling the drone up. Like so I'm on console, I can't I haven't got the drone mod, which would be quite cool, but something to be said as well, I'm gonna mention G Portal again because I'm playing this this let's play on multiplayer on a multiplayer server provided by G Portal. The great thing about that as well, I'm playing on PlayStation 5. A lot of people are saying, oh, it's all right if you're on PC. I'm on PlayStation 5. The, the, G, the G Portal server gets set up and it's going to run using the PC, adding things in, that kind of stuff. But because I'm accessing it via my PlayStation, and it, it's a multiplayer server, um, cross-play, so Xbox, PC, anyone can access it, no bail count. Because it's being run by a third-party server. It's not me running it. So there's no bail, no bail limit. Um, so whilst I'm on PlayStation 5, if you're on Xbox or something like that, it's worth looking at. If you want to bust the bail limit, set one up on a, on a, on a server and run it like that. So what I'm going to do, let's do that. Let's throw, let's throw the drone up. Uh, so the gate's there. Let's go across the field here. That's the field I want to... No, hang on. Where's the field I want to harvest? It's that side of the river, isn't it? So is there a gate through here? Ah, there is, right in the corner of the field. Okay, I could have got to it from there. Is there another one further along here? There's not a crossing point, is there? So it is in the corner of that field where I'm doing the hay work. Isn't it funny? I went round that field, I did all the mowing, and I did the wind rowing, didn't even notice that gate. Okay, right, I need to turn around. Ha 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 That's going to be fun, isn't it? Let's bring the drone back down. Bomb. Right. Um... <laughs> I'm going to have to go up to the crossroads and come back, aren't I? Um, oh, I was going to say, I could try and turn it around here. Oh, I know what I can do. Now, um, FS Landscaping has been in the comments, responding to people's comments and stuff. Uh, so a lot of people have said they, they don't want to start. Like I said, my worry is if, if, if local legislation, laws, government rules change, um, if an update is required at any point is kind of what I'm going for, it can cause a problem. FS Landscaping said that an update has been submitted to Giants. It has gone in already and that a new save game should not be needed. It says should not. <laughs> Yeah, we'll see, but it does say should not. So, yeah, it's all good. Right, let's get the beacons back on. We've got it back on the main road. Anyway, enough of my chittle chatter. I'll get this into the top field. Um, then we'll have to... Oh, that's a good point. I wonder how much gap there is because I need to attach the harvest to this straight away. I can't really... Crop destruction is on as well, so we, can, we can't risk losing any of the crop I really don't know and the other problem I've got here as well this is going to be really 
I'm, I'm loving it. I'm loving the challenge of it. Because the gates are narrow and the roads are narrow and they're tight and it's not straightforward and easy, um, I'm trying to work out how to get in through that gateway. It might mean going up the lane and turning around, but then I'm thinking, where do I turn around up there? Um, can I... I'm just thinking, can I cut across the road without a car coming up me inside? Will I be able to swing around without hitting that other fence there and getting through the gateway? Potentially. Okay, that went better than I thought it was going to. I'll take that as a win. No, please don't tell me I've got caught in the fence. I have. Oh no! And there's a car behind me. That's just great. I'm, I'm stuck. I'm stuck. I'm fully stuck. The car's in the way. So I I can point forward enough, then the car can move. I can't even get out of this field. So I was thinking if I could drive around and give it a nudge. Oh, I wonder if I can actually. Um, can I get between them? You know what? I'm going to hop the fence. Because here, my trusty steed. That's a bit of luck, isn't it? Who the funk it? Anyway, sorry, I've got stuff to do. I was probably spent the first 20 minutes of this video just chatting, but that's kind of part and parcel. Getting the day to day jobs done, the things done that need to be done. And have a bit of a chat while we're doing it. Explain a few things. Hopefully people that um, may have decided they didn't want to watch it because I wasn't running seasons. Can I get that a bit of a nuts call? Not knock the harvest header off. It's not ideal, it's not perfect, I know that, but you know what, that might just be enough. Let's back that up. Just leave that there for the moment. Hop out. Uh, we're in farmer logic it worked brute force and ignorance I'm not saying farmers are ignorant I, 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 you have to be so careful what you say don't you because you know I'm just very aware people go oh hang on a minute <laughs> that was a bit rude that's, that's not what I mean can I get that turn round in there get the harvester through can I get the harvester through the gate I think if I get to a point where I've got my own fields, I might be able to swing around in there. Um, is there a fence running all the way through there? Yeah, there is. I'm going to have to buy a really small harvester. I'm sure somebody, who showed me recently, somebody's working on a, on a gleaner. Um, is it TT Mod Passion? Who was it? They're working on one, a little, it's a gleaner, but it's quite tall. It's a, it's a small one, but very tall. I'm not going to be able to do this. If I attach it outside, I can't get through the gate. It's going to mean driving on some of the crops, which I really don't want to do. I really don't want to do. Well, maybe if I can pull that forward, get the harvester into the field, then back this back up again. I don't know. Beacon's off. Engine off, lights off. I'm going to have to walk back. I'm going to walk back and get the harvester. Let's see how we get on when I get back. See you in a minute. We're in a fence ideal. The question is going to be, is it ideal? We just got the call. We just got the call from Pemberton's. It was standby, standby. Go. We have got approval. We have got permission. We can go. We can help. We can do it. As if it was in any doubt. As if as if it wasn't going to be the case. I don't know if I'm going to get through. Um, as if it wasn't going to be the case that we wouldn't get access. But anyway. Whoa. Okay. Can I now get through here if I can't get through this one is there a car there what am I stuck on oh okay okay hey that's well so that was some good quality driving apart from that bit um, what's this got in it 31.8 hours obviously it's not mine this a contract is being completed on behalf of who are we doing this one for um, harvesting this is for Caroline or Carolyn. The spraying one I'm going to be doing. Got some interesting names for people that live in Little St Anne. <laughs> so, the question is going to be, can I get in through the gateway? The gate opens that side, so I should be right. So what I need to do is drive forward, then back up, back the header up, without, if possible, damaging any crops. Okay, we're through the gate. That's a start. 
what I want to do is, if I can, can I use my mirrors here? How are we looking that side? Let's swing that way without hitting the fence. How are we looking that side? I don't normally do it like this. Just go like that. I can still see where's the crop. Oh, we're, we're, we're close. We are so close. What I'm going to do is hop out and have a look. Just how close are Oh! oh. I tell you, I tell you what. You know, sometimes you do stuff and you just smile and you say to yourself, you know what? I'm not as bad at all this as people think, you know. <laughs> I wonder if I could be an actual passable farmer, you know. Who knows, right? Let's keep that as straight as possible. And you can get that into position. Right, that will do. We can get him going. Engine off, right. Get him going? Me? What am I talking about? Okay, let's drop that reel down just a little bit. Question is, how far can I go back without hitting that fence? As you can see, there's a lot of weeds in this, but I can't do a lot about that. Oh yeah. Every single time. That's not too bad, I can catch that bit on the way back. Unfolded it. <sighs> Canola. Let's do this. That screen's right in the way. I can't see that side of the header. I suppose I can always um, try and look in my mirror. If I miss any, I'll just come back around and do so. Don't know how much we're going to get off this. We've got to deliver to the, to the oil mill. So we'll get this done, delivered to the oil mill, then we'll whiz down to Pemberton's. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll, I don't know. It's exciting. <laughs> I'm excited. Can you tell? Actually, that's not doing too bad. It's a big this is a long field, this one, isn't it? It's long. So, we'll go around the outside, do all that. I've done it the wrong way again, haven't I? I always get in trouble for that. You know what? Avoid the crop. Don't drive into the crop. And that would make more sense as well, because I can see that side. Um, oh no, it's not right. Oh, I suppose it's over here would be. Now I am. Uh, for having the um, pipe, pipe facing the correct way for opening up. I don't suppose it really matters in the first turn. It's alright if you've got a bit of runoff, if you've got space either side, but when you've got trees and you've got a hedge and that kind of stuff, it's actually we're quite close to this side anyway. But actually going this way, I can see there rather than that side, I can't see because the monitors, that does make more sense going this way around, doesn't it? I know I said this when I was doing it on um on Silver Run switching over to doing farming I, I love doing the logging I really do enjoy it but I really do miss the, the farming farming and having done Griffin which was quite a big map and, and I, I do like because everyone has their you know their particular flavours and tastes and things they're into but this sort of style of, of gameplay I like this um, you know it's more laid back, it's more relaxed, it's more, you know, it's not necessarily just get everything done as quickly as possible. It's, it's more about the jobs than it is about the result, you know. The journey, not the destination. I know I've said that before as well. So, uh, that being said, we'll probably skip to the end now because I need to get all this done. It's going to take a little while. Probably shouldn't turn that tightly, 
but yeah, we, yeah, we're doing alright. It's gonna yeah with the weeds in here as well, and I don't know actually what we're looking at precision farming wise I haven't even kind of got my head around all that I mean to be honest with you I'm going to run it as I, as I normally do if we do all right with the, the, the environmental scores all it's going to mean is if I've got the right sensors and stuff like that for doing spot application for weeding is going to make life a lot easier um, providing I'm using the correct sprayers that should work um, for doing our I mean we can do soil sampling I haven't, I haven't done any of that yet um, so we can do some soil sampling which we'll get to at some point and then obviously with applying of our nitrogen and our pH levels and all that kind of stuff, it will be, it's one pass application, isn't it? So that will be a little bit different to what I normally do. Now we're looking, okay. I'll have to take that JCB. Go and grab the trailer that came with the contract. And we'll get that done too. If we'll get we'll get the whole way around the field, we might get all the way around before we fall. Potentially. Okay, 20 to 9, the contract is, um, well, so I've, I've cleared the canola, I've done the first load was delivered, and I think the contract's at the 96% complete, I'm hoping this, I'm hoping this completes it, could be in trouble if it doesn't, so oil mill is where we're heading, I enjoyed that, that was nice and relaxing. So fingers crossed. I'm going to dump the lot. Like I say, this is not about keeping crop or saving it for anything. I hope it completes. If it doesn't, we're in trouble. There we go. So five grand on top, just over five grand on top of the contract, which is good. Beacon's off. We'll take this back to the main store, pick up the van. We're going to whiz over to Pemberton's. 
and uh, sort out feeding his sheep and then moving those bales. Which again, I'm kind of looking forward to doing. You're going to have to look at... Yeah, I'm going to have to get on the... on. Um, and then talk to the uh, uh, Pemberton's about their contractors and how the contracting works and who they contact and when and that kind of stuff. I've got a lot more uh, work and research to do, so that's going to be for the... Um, has that got the sensors on it? No. I don't think it's got the sensors up there, has it? For doing... because I've got to do herbicide spraying. Whether it'll have the road cut-offs and stuff. I don't know, I'm not worrying about a job that I'm not even doing yet. So, park this up. That's off, engine off. Grab the van. So I'm just complete that. Which was that one there. Collect on that. That's active. There's a fertilising, some bits and bobs down there. I'm going to need to look at getting the herbicide on them. So, let's go and check this out. First thing I'm going to need to do when we get there is... Um, it's all going to give me just saying straight away, oh yeah, what we're going to do is... I'm not too sure. I need, I need a route. I need to work out a route through to where the sheep are. I don't know how to get the bales to them. Like I said earlier, finding my way around the map is, you know, some maps are far more open and it's kind of obvious or there's no fencing, there's no gates, it's just an open map, open plan, just go anywhere you like. Which coming off the back of Silver Run was pretty much like that, go where you want, get yourself something off-roady and just drive cross country. Um, it's just not like that, I've got, I've got, a, I've got to work out a route. So, yeah, and as I was saying earlier, I think I probably started the conversation twice, this is probably the third time I'll get distracted again, about improving productivity on the farm. Um, some of, like I said in the first episode, some of the, the pastures, some of the cow barns and pens have got hay in, which puts them at 80% productive, and some have got TMR in. So what we've got to look at doing, I think, moving forward is probably how do we, or what do we need to get together to make total mix ration to get them all at 100%? That's going to be the kind of thing, I suppose. I parked where I parked before. This is now my parking spot. This is this is my bay. Okay, stop there. So. Um, where are we going to then? If we go through the farm shop. The farm shop, if I call, recall correctly, when did it open? 2017? So I remember um, the, the raw milk video. It was the first one I ever watched of Tom Pemberton's was when he put out the raw milk video about how to use the raw milk machine on their farm. That was kind of, I think, what started it all off. And then I'm sure it was 2017. They had, they started work on the farm shop, or the farm shop opened in 2017, but they had it all kind of cleared out. But anyway, what we'll do is, if we go around the side, oh no, actually, we need to go through the shop, don't we? Um, so with the sheep, it's off to the right, here. So, is there a gate over there? I'm going to have to come, can't come through that way. This is going to be incredibly tight. Is there a gate up here? Right, we've got a gate there. It's just going to be a series of a series of gates, isn't it? Uh, this one... Wow, that's bumpy, isn't it? There's not a gate here. That's a separate pen, okay. Um, I suppose we can go through that one. Hmm. That's better. Uh... So it's going to mean coming through the cow pen. And either going through that gate, that gate, that gate and up, or this gate, that gate and through. I think probably those ones. If I open this internal one first, we'll do that one last. So the cows don't escape. 
And then can I get out through? Well, there's not a gateway there. There is there, which leads on from that one. Probably have to come through the yard, I guess. Now, I've got a funny feeling as well that the... Um, The, uh, the Manny 3 is going to be locked, I think. So we might have to go and get the keys. So I'm just thinking, each one of these bales is 6,000. If I take two over, then we need to look at whereabouts these are going to be put. I'm wondering, I'll, I'll ask them. We'll go in and have a check. We'll see what they want to do. I know they often put size bales. Now this is where things are going to differ. In the real world, IRL, in real life, um, these bales... When they do hay baling, they tend to wrap their hay bales to protect them. They don't wrap them to make silage bales. They'll do kind of like haylage, I guess. The straw bales often get put in the barn space, in the showroom, in various different places. But these are often wrapped. But obviously we can't do that. Wrapped bales that become silage bales in game. So what I'm going to do, they normally have round bales. Sometimes they have square. It depends what they can get hold of and what they've done. But I'm thinking down the side of here... If I open that gate, when we come to store them, we could stack them up. If I kind of put them halfway down or something, then we could access them. I don't know. I'd say I'll go and find out. Let's go and check on the um, on the telly hand, or I think it's going to be locked. Yeah, I can't get in it. I need to go. I need to go and get keys. I need access. Wow, we've got a lot of manure piling up here. Am I going to need to move those? Probably. I'll do that as well. Can I get through here? I'm pretty sure we can skim through. So I need to open the gate. There we go. Um, yeah. Let's go. Let's go and work out where the keys are. We'll go to the shop, see if we can grab them. Got the keys. Let's go. Nothing we have to work out at some point. Assuming, of course, they're going to want help with it. Is um, how the parlour works and how the dairy situation works with regard to milk and where the milk goes in, where it comes out, where the various different products. What products? I'm assuming they're going to want some cheese made for the for the shop. Maybe I don't know. Um, so we'll have a look at that. I went a long way around this time, didn't I? Why does that sound so, okay, slurry? Slurry to 26,000 litres. Wow, okay. I was thinking there wouldn't be a lot of slurry for doing slurry work, but I suppose we could do some tanking. I was offered an option. It was Mr. Taddy Gaz. Um, the Shroud and. It's that kind of thing of the size of the tank's right and the wheel size is correct, but obviously theirs is a Prime X, which is theirs is blue. And there was one that he showed me that had the option to have the right colour, but the wheels were the wheel the single axle was really small, the tyres on it. So it's that kind of which way do you go with it? Do you try and get the right look, the wrong colour, or do you go for the right colour but not quite the right look? It's going to come down to a personal preference. Like I said right at the start, it's not going to be exact the same with the tractors it's not exact the, the feed mix is not exact can we access it now there we go right so what we're going to do go and grab those forks because we're going to need them and the same with this this is a facsimile it's a, it's a version of theirs is a, a small manor too obviously this is a merlot but it's making the best of what you've got uh, let's do that So, let's grab a couple of bells. Actually, this should be quite, it's fairly small, should be quite manoeuvrable. We'll have a look and see. I might even, depends how far down the rabbit hole you want to go. I might watch a couple more videos and see if you can see. Normally, people blur out number plates and stuff like that, but we could even do the correct number plates if we were going to go really bonkers about it. So, what we'll do, we'll take two through and we'll feed the. Uh, feed the sheep 
I'm part of the farm. I'm helping out Pemberton's. How cool is that? Well, I think it's cool. <laughs> Okay, so not even in the middle, but that's okay. We'll take those through, work out a route round. <laughs> we'll go through this gate, I think, and then through the other ones. We'll open them and close them as we go. What's the first rule? Always close the gates. And then we'll start moving some of the bales. I'm just wondering whether I'm going to have time to get up to that um, hay contract field and start doing the tedding because that's going to need to be done. Plus, I've got that other contract. Maybe I can do it in the next episode. I need to get that other contract done as well, the herbicide contract. I'm going to have to buy. I mean, at the end of the day, if I get more of them come up, that would be great. As you can see, the finances here at Pemberton's are different to mine. That 161,000, that's not mine. That's Pemberton's farm money. When I say that, I'm obviously, I'm not saying that's what they've got in their bank account. I have no idea what they've got in their bank account. Um, if anyone from Pemberton's watches at any point, <laughs> I'm, I'm probably vastly over-exaggerating what you've got in your bank account. But um, it's just an amount that's in there. Um, I'm assuming the contractors will have their own bank account. And there's also a bank. We have a bank available as well, which we can, we can get money from. I said we can. Oh, there's any water as well. Is there a water tanker? That little one, that doesn't milk, doesn't it? Does that do water as well? I don't know. Find the sheep. I know it's going to be a lot of two in and frame, but I don't want them getting out. Um, I can't remember which one it is. If I drop them here and pull it out there and it goes, then we know it's there. There we go. Oh, okay. That's taken all of that. So what I'll do, if I can turn around a little bit, we'll turn a little bit and we'll put them in that way, and then they can... Actually, it doesn't really matter, does it? I can leave them as they are. They will gradually go from there as and when they need it, which is great. And then, this has got a rear hitch, hasn't it? Yeah. Where do I get water from? Let's look for that too, because I don't know. Learning the ropes. There's a little pond there. I wonder if I can get water out of that. Probably shouldn't, but... You never know. Um, is that just there for the look of it, or is that there for a reason? I don't know. I don't know if that tank has actually got milk in it, or... There a water point. Let's check on the old sat nav. Um, there's a lot going on here, isn't there? I don't know. I suppose I can try there. If I can't find one, there must be some. There must be one somewhere. There's got to be a point for water because the pastures will need it. That's a good point, actually. Um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to start moving those bales. We'll, I'll sort the water out. So the next episode, then, we've got we've got grass work to do. We're going to be looking at... Um, I'm, I'm going to say this again. I know it's not going to happen. But what I'm going to try to do for this series, at least, is have, <laughs> is have shorter episodes. I know what I always say, and it never happens. But we'll try... Now, I don't know how many of these I'm going to be able to lift, so what we'll do... Am I going to do them that way round or that way round? I'm going to do them this way round. 
Can I reach up and get four off the top? I'll do four at a time because I haven't got a real weight on this. I don't know how good this is going to be for lift capacity. So if I try four, bearing in mind there's 6,000 litres each, so it's going to be a fair amount. It's a bit more central, isn't it? Too bad. Let's bring that down. Now I'm going to be honest. I've, I've said this before. You might be new to the channel. You might not have heard me talk about this before. Jobs like this, but this job specifically. Um, a few years back, Mrs. Silly P paid for me to do a, a tractor driving experience in Yorkshire, a, a place called Hilltop Farm. The farmer's name was Rob, and the guy was amazing. I got to drive John Deere, I got to do a little bit of ploughing, I, I got to do like a trailer slalom, but he also had this little JCB telehander, and it was a tiny little thing. Not a skid still over a telehander, but a really small one. And um, I got to do bale stacking, they had all these straw bales, and you kind of got to, you had to pick up so many, move them and, and stack them neatly elsewhere. I absolutely, like, I could have done that all day. I loved every second of doing that. It was just joyous. <laughs> and that's the thing. It's that, you know, I suppose, again, if you're even slightly, even slightly OCD, if you're trying to be meticulous about something, it was that, I don't know. And I think because of, and he said at the time, the controls for it were very joystick control and then you've pedals you accelerate in reverse so you just have forward backwards and then your joystick controls for your arm for your up and down and you, you know for all of that movement and then you tilt and all that kind of stuff um and it just felt very natural it felt normal i suppose from playing with the controller and stuff like that and i i just oh man i just a blast and i you know i could go and happily go and work on a farm just doing that be, be there for doing bailing and I would happily just move bales around all day long can I do six or is that going to overstress this to reckon I mean, to be fair they did start to, to split apart as it was can this do six oh I'm on the limit there I think I'll stick with four just get them out of the way of the middle of the field um, they were very appreciative of me bringing them thanked me you know for doing it very kind of me um, I didn't charge them I did donate them and like I say had I wrapped them because they were part of a silage contract I made 13 grand selling eight so I could have wrapped all of these and I could have made an absolute load of money but it was more important for this I think personally I a bit more room to turn there Here. Might have to nudge these in from the other side, like over the wall, because they're um, they are moving a little bit, as you can see. I wonder if I can just give that a little bit of a nudge. So I've got to be careful. To get to the wall on Go that way, and then turn a little bit. It's quite a tight space, but we should be all right. Can I just give those a little bit of a nudge? Not without extending the beam, which I'll do. There we go, it's a bit better. They might still move around later on, but at least for the time being, they'll be kind of tidy, I guess. I've got the rest of those to move around, so we'll move them out of the way. At least they'll be around here. And the same thing, I'm hoping, because um, they have a they have a bailing, well, there's a bailing contract that sometimes comes big bail does big bail work. And like I've said before, they often have farmers locally that will do their arable crops and will have straw left over, and they'll get a guy will come out and bale the straw, bale the hay. So not only have they got silage contracts that's doing the silage work, there will be some bailing work. But I'm also wondering whether or not, because because we've got no bale limit. 
I'm thinking doing hay bales might work out better because we haven't got a silo here for putting loose material. And I'm thinking because, again, unlike real life where they're, they're, they're feeding hay as hay bales, but their total mix ration is made up of silage and other components, we need the hay for doing total mix ration. So it'll be hay and silage. So we need a certain amount of hay bales. Um, so a lot of the grass work is going to be done for silage, but then there's going to be a load of it will be done for hay, which will be a little bit different to real life. But we'll still get to mow and we'll get to ted it. It will then get windrowed and then we'll probably bale it, but obviously it won't be wrapped. So I'm going to move the rest of these bales. I'm going to have a bit of a fish around, see if I can work out where this water goes or where I can get water from. Um, and then I will probably finish doing the sheep and then I'll start the next episode. For the, whole, the rest of the day, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm on times one i'm doing one day months and, and again you know I'm, i can't i'm, I'm going to do you know the sort of settings i want to do the seasons thing went either way and that was the thing a few people have messaged and some people have commented saying look you know why aren't you doing it and i thought you know what it doesn't it's not going to make a huge amount of difference it's going to be a bit of a there would be more of a problem if i was doing an arable farm i think because this is a dairy farm and a lot of it's going to be grass work but it does also give us that time crunch that we need to make sure we get our third cut done before you because it with crops if I was doing an arable farm it would be a lot more difficult but I think with here the grass is going to be the issue we need to get the grass done before we can't cut any more grass anymore once we hit those winter months and we can't cut grass anymore that's where we might have a problem that's not the neatest but it will do for the time being um, so yeah I'm going to see in a bit we'll get the rest of those in and we'll see if we can work up this water goes so I'll get my that hay baling contract we'll get on with that and I've got that um, herbiciding job that needs to be done uh, what else there's other but there's other contracts available it's just deciding and, and when I go back over to my farm we're now up to what are we up to are we 69,000 or 67,000 I think we might be buying our first first plot of land maybe I don't know maybe Bales are stacked just over there. Uh, we're in the yard. It's just a maze of gates. It's brilliant. I love it. Uh, so what we're going to do is grab the tank. I don't think there's milk in it. Uh, let's grab that from there. Double check. Uh, owned by Pemptons Farm and Dairy. Uh, no, it doesn't show anything in it. So let's take it over to that pond and see. Doesn't have to try it. There, that's good. That was the other thing I wasn't sure. It should do because the Merlot's got that nice trailer hitch system on the back, which is pretty cool. I think, is it this one that's got the option you can have a three point link on the back? I can't remember now. Maybe. Um, was it Rob or Richard? Somebody sent me a picture the other day. I might be not even either of those. Um, actually, I'm going to leave both those open because I should be able to bring it back around again. The only problem I'm going to have is if I fill up with water. And I need it for milk. Try that open. Okay, it opens that way. I don't know how much water they like to take. Now I know it's going to be a, a like this kind of thing. That you run that. There's always that that line, isn't there? That if you want to be more immersive, and you know, I've got cows in this pasture, and because on a dairy farm, cows learn. You know, within I'm sure it, it was within three days or something. I know when again I'm talking about Tom Pemberton's farm, but he went over to Ireland and he was looking at all the different ways, and they've got the robotic system and the ones with the cows have got the tags, and the cows come in, the gates open automatically, they allow them in, the, the cows walk up to the thing, the milking thing attaches, 
and the tag registers it works out how much milk's come from them it does all these amazing things and then when they leave they go out for another one it takes them out to a pasture and even the pasture gates are controlled based upon what fields they want them to be grazing in and they can change that as each field comes to the end of its grazing time and needs to kind of have a bit of time to recover um, and I'm sure the guy said once they had the system installed it was three days it, it took about three days for the cows to get used to that system and then they understood so the thing is if you leave gates open the cows will think okay it's time to we're going and be milked because the gates are open we go in or they're going to come in for feed or you know but obviously in game realistically no I don't have to of course I could leave all the gates open the cows aren't going to go anywhere but it's, it's that thing of you know what do we do you know so what we're going to do is swing down a little bit into here I just need to get the trailer in a little bit Yep, we're filling up. Brilliant. Do I fill it completely, though? Um, I haven't got many sheep. Actually, it's only going to take 8,000 litres, isn't it? Is this 8 or 9? It's 8, isn't it? No, I'll, I'll fill it. It's not a problem. Can this pull it out of the hole? Yep. Very good. Probably should have left the forks behind actually because that's an extension on the front there I could probably have done without but if I just lift that out of the way out of the way the fences we should be able to turn straight in there again tight gateways probably should have gone into the pen and swung around but nope should have swung around not a problem And we'll get them sorted. I'm, I am honestly, I don't know how you guys feel watching. I, I, I'm, I'm really enjoying this. I'm just enjoying playing it. You know, I'm going to right to see that gate. If they go anywhere, they're going to come into these pens. If they were going to get out, which they're not, they could. We'll go around the back. Sheep seem very happy trotting around. We all had it, look. Same go. Um, okay, that's a worry. I think I'm up. Am I not close enough to the tree? Mm -hmm. There we go. Whoa, I had a bit of a panic on then. How are we looking? Water, 1,500. Food, 4,000. Animals, 15. We're good. Right, I'll move that water then. <laughs> I didn't need 8,000 litres, did I? Um, can I get round that and the gate? And it's going to be a lot of uh, doing figures of eight round fields. But that is where I'm going to end this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching.